is the mid e lx90 8 inch um, advanced chroma free acf with a auto star uh, auto guide which is a talkie version and now is doing the i've leveled it using my mobile phone and also true north it found the true north for me i've attached the velcro on the back of this and the side so i can attach this if i want <clears throat> i'm not going to use that thing for here there's a clamp and i'm not going to enter there's no point it so he's searching now for the star vega of course i've not attached anything yet no um as you can see no back focal tube no diagonal no nothing else okay i'm just letting it do its job as you can see this daylight of course you cannot see much so i just say that i agree with it that is a, a star vega and i'll let it go now for the star capella and he's looking now for the capella Of course, if it was in the night time, I would have actually tried to see if it is really in center. I would train it and other thing. It's correcting itself. Okay, so I can now press enter if you see it. Of course, I cannot see the capella at this time of the day. The sun has just set, so it's not visible. But I just say enter. I agree with it. No, align successful object. Okay, I want to see the object. So let me see what object it has. Press the enter object, and now it goes to solar system. And I say again, enter, and this goes to all the objects in the solar system that are within the in the library of this. So. Mercury, no. Oh, sorry, I have to go here actually. It's a weird system. Mercury, Venus, you have to press this and this. Venus, Mars. I'm testing it just to see Jupiter. Jupiter must be around somewhere in the horizon, above the horizon. So I enter, it must be in that direction, somewhere. If it goes into that direction, that means it's working, so I enter, it's calculating, it's giving me some information about it. Okay, very basic stuff. Distinguished by its giant red spot, thought to be comprised of a raging storm of hydrogen and ammonia. So he says it's uh, minus five degrees behind the horizon or is uh, under the celestial equator. Um, let's see anyway. Impressed by its colossal size, ancient Roman astronomers named the colorful behemoth after their primary god, Jupiter, or Jove. Later philosophers attributed okay. It's not reason, so it doesn't tell him to me. Oh, I've not entered the correct time, by the way. It says 3.10 a.m. And the time now is around, uh, um, yeah, around 9 o'clock. Let me just enter the correct time. That's another session. He's a handsome looking. I bet he read your rump any day of the week, would not he, lady, eh? He would. I'm, 
I lost my voice. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I cannot sing. He understood that I'm not a threat to him. And the telescope is now tracking the Crab Nebula. During the night, or as they said, during the war, <laughs> last night, it couldn't find any object correctly. Now during the day, it's every object it's finding correctly. By the way, we try tonight. Tonight it will be cl clear skies. I recommend when you get a telescope, a meat telescope with go-to system, uh, reset the auto star. You go to the mood and go down using these scroll buttons here. And you go down or up and find the reset. You have to reset it. Then when you want to operate every time, I think, you have to go first. Set your date, then set the time, day, day uh, saving, summer saving time, summer time one hour ahead or behind, which is winter normal time, and uh, that's it. And then you go for the alignment again, and auto align, or two star. I'm using two uh, stars and I adjusted the telescope toward the magnetic north using my mobile phone. Hopefully that's correct. And now I'm entering and let it go to find where it wants. Akerner, okay, I don't want... The stars I can see here is one of them is that star, which is the... see the center? That's the... Uh, Arcturus. So I go down. To find the Arcturus. Antares. Antares must be also visible beside the Jupiter. But I'm going for Antares. Arcturus. Uh -huh. Arcturus is here. And let us see if it is correct. Now I can find it. Okay. It's turning toward the right direction. I want to turn on the flash so you can see. Okay. That's the direction is almost right. So when it goes there and it points to the Arcturus that is rising uh-huh I think that is almost right I think it's around two three degrees wrong I have to press it and bring it to that position I will do it okay the Arcturus is now at the field of view um, of course I don't know if you can see it but anyway it's in the field of view at the center and uh, I use the Focal reducer just to make the wild field of view. So I'm now entering So he knows that's a star So I'm now going for the second star Let me see what the star here can choose. I'm having a meet uh, ETX 8 inch yeah, 200 uh, LX90. Yeah. LX90 which is a lighter version of the uh, 200 look at it. It's a new one. Look at the paint I'll just put this oh, thank you, thank you. This is the correcting plate. That's the lovely mirror. Oh, it's so exciting. Sorry, I'll wait for it to get it fixed because then you'll see it moving. And, and this is a talky one, huh? It talks, yeah. So it's got a, it's got the speaker there. Oh. When you're, when you point it at a, say you point it at Jupiter, mm. you can press the speaker and it'll talk to you and tell you a bit about the planet. Is it? 
possible that it finds its way around or not? It does find its way. So when when if, if we were outside, oh, it has a uh, it's got GPS. So, so yeah. it's, it's taking it, it's trying to take a GPS fix yeah. now, but because of the house, it's very yeah, difficult yeah, to get yeah. a signal in here. But if we were outside, we would point it north, um, level it, mm-hmm. and then it'll it'll it fixes it it uh, automatically slews to two stars in yeah. the sky, two bright stars. So it'll slew to the first one accurately. Well, yeah, I mean, you need to see, it, it may get it accurate first mm. time. If it's not, you just look through the thing and, and you just you adjust it slightly. It, yeah. So you, you adjust it slightly, then you tell it to go find the second star. And if you need to adjust it again, you do. And then it knows exactly where it is. So then That's you can just lovely. say, uh, go to Saturn. Just a yeah. question. It has a two-inch tripod, I mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to put it in the windowsill and without the tripod, just put it in the windowsill oh. to have a look? Yeah, I think you could. Oh, is it stable? Yeah, yeah, yeah because this that, that comes apart. So we will take this apart to yeah, transport yeah. it. So otherwise, it's too heavy. Is it stable? You think? It can oh, stand. Oh, yeah, it'll be stable. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. I just kind of go. I will go tonight probably. <laughs> We're looking at the yeah, yeah. Um, forest. I'll just see. Wait for a PMQ switch. You should get one soon. Yeah. So basically, so this. Um, don't worry. Inside the building, I don't expect you. Yeah, that's right. Really. But you say so you got you got the, you got the, the, the adjusting adjusting oh, handle here. Oh, oh. So there's, there's that one, and then there's uh, this one here, which. Oh yeah, for the so, so. Azimuth phone. Huh? But we'll wait for it to get a... It's lovely. Not, I'll show you impressive, it impressive. So north is... North is about there. And I'll level it. Oof. So you know, just get a... Like, I use my phone to make sure the tube's yeah, yeah, level. Yeah. I think the... I use a Vixie for this. There's an angle, there's a little device which shows the angle. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. magnetic, just it sticks to here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, lovely, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, so, as I said, so it's Cannot believe I got this. <laughs> it was a dream. <laughs> Bless you, man. I mean, you can see the, the you know, details on Jupiter, the rings. Oh, All yeah, that thing yeah. you can see very easily. Uh, I tried to actually photograph the Jupiter, though, didn't I? So, for telescope I've attached the auto guide auto star the velcro to the body I can it's like magnet as if it attracts to it and for the second star I'm going to choose the star which is right above our head let me turn off the flash yeah that's the star you see there in the center that's Vega and I'm going to use that Uh, I've not chosen the star Vega. Uh, the easiest way is not to go alphabetically A, B, C, D in the name of the first uh, letters of the stars. Go upward. Scroll upward and reach from the end to the beginning. So I'm now going to enter this. And just go for the star to slew toward the target. As you may be able to see. trying to find it uh, of course I will try to help it because it's the first time I'm using this with this system so I have to bring it to the center I will do that the second star I noticed that the Vega was covered with the clouds so I just chose Zantars over there beside the brightest dot that you see is Jupiter so what I'm going now is to press enter and this is calculating. Alignment so successful. I'm now going to choose the object. So I press enter again. Solar system. And this is going to Mercury. Uh, I want to go for Jupiter. So I'm going down. Venus. Mars. Jupiter. If I enter it now, this will go to talk about it. I don't want talk because I've listened already to that. I want it to go to Jupiter. So. Yeah, dead center. Dead center. We have the Jupiter dead center. If I land successful. Amazing. I have it at the center now. Oh, lovely. Oh, I'm really impressed. Uh, the other spot. Now I'm able to track with my meat. 
uh, 18-inch uh, LX90 ACF telescope, advanced coma free, or ultra high transmission coating. Amazing. That's amazing. I finally succeeded. What I did was that I didn't go for auto align. I went first reset uh, the handset. Second, what I did, um, I went and uh, actually set the date, set the time, and then uh, saved the for the for the summer now. Uh, daylight saving time I set it up also for that. Then after that I went uh, I went and chose the old. Uh, and compass alignment, I use the as a compass by the mobile phone. And there is an app for that. <coughs> Leveled it with the app also. And then I ask it to go and find two stars for me, two star method. Instead of the easy way, I went for the two star method. The star, one of them was Arcturus, the other was Antares. And it really did the job well. And now after that, I went to Jupiter and now I'm, uh, I was listening to Saturn. Now I'm going back to Jupiter again. Okay, I asked the uh, telescope to find me the Ring Nebula, Messier 57, and it found, for the first time I'm seeing the Ring Nebula, it's, uh, with the averted vision is clearly there, and uh, oh, I'm so excited, I love this telescope, that's such a good piece of kit, oh, exciting. Okay, what is important is that it's not just centering them, it's tracking them. That's very important. So, I may later try to do some astrophotography. I'm just doing learning this uh, system, how it is, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm now watching the M22, the global cluster in the Sagittarius, which is somewhere there. Okay, I'm using the Mead uh, LX90 and uh, of course I'm going to a tour is now going into M5, Messier 5 is a global cluster in the Ophiuchus constellation. What I was noticing is that when I was using this is that when I need to, you know, when you want to look through the eyepiece, you need to hold your hand somewhere and just be sure that you, you can keep your head at a good distance from the eyepiece. So these handles come useful, very good for that. I always wondered, because they are not good for carrying or lifting the telescope. For that, I don't think they have done a good design. It's not clear where you have to hold it to lift it. These ones are not really for lifting. 
But anyway, you can use it, but it's not designed for that. I think the design is just for holding it when you're observing. And it's very sturdy, actually. When you hold it, no vibration in the eyepiece. That's amazing. I love this setup. Okay, that's the first lesson I'm learning. Dew forms on the Yeah, corrector plate of the telescope. So that's what is affecting the view. I was noticing that I cannot see the fuzzies after a while. So I think I have a dew shield, but I have to buy a heated one just to heat. That's a dew shield with the heat, but uh, I didn't have the heat adjustment part of it. So that is the next thing I will get. So, you can see a close-up of the dew here. So, uh, at the moment I'm packing up and then leave. Go to sleep. It's beautiful. Nice experience. Love the experience. I really love this purchase of this telescope. It's really the best thing I've ever done. Oh, that looks really nice. Goes with that even, makes it more beautiful. Yeah. So How much is this with this now? Oh, I haven't got a clue off the Okay, you have to tell me. Woo! That's tell why I should zip it off. Yeah. Basically, a plastic shield that you shove over the front of the scope. Yes. Because you're at that angle and it helps to deflect any dew that's in the air falling on the front of it. Yes. That's great, it does yeah. a brilliant job. Okay. But. We live in the UK, yeah, and Let's the get UK cold. gets more dew than most of the countries in the world. Yeah. So what you do is you put the same thing on; it looks exactly the same, mm -hmm. apart from it's got a heater band built in here. Oh, so and then that plugs into the dew heater. Yo, yeah, oh, lovely! And the dew heater, this kind of connector, yeah. goes to the com uh, yeah um, connector. Yes, we, follow me around here. I'll show you a myriad of different dew, dew controllers. Oh, basically that plugs into there and you use that to decide how much heat you're yeah. going to put through that okay it doesn't go on the on the actual telescope no. itself or my... yeah, this is the only problem with have with buying one with the heater oh. in order to use the heater you have to then buy one of those okay. how much but is that i'll come back to that in a minute yes. but off the you camera don't need it no no you don't need it straight away yeah. you could get away with the normal mm. one yeah but in the end, as we're in the UK, I will tell you 110,000% you will need a dew heater yeah. in the end. You don't need one to start with. Yes. You can get up and running. Yes. You can enjoy the scope. Yes. But dew is your biggest problem in the UK. Yes, definitely. So you will end up buying one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> it is every day dealing with the frost also. <laughs> the... Celestron, or you can buy a Skywatch if you want to learn this. Come from the same Chinese factory uh, with the light, red light, and also the blue light. Sorry, the white light. And the radio was really good companion for tonight. I can listen to radio, can do everything. It was charging. I can charge my mobile phone here. Everything looks so well done. So this will be going to be charged for later to tomorrow night. Okay, I have now and finished the first session of astrophotography, and I used the, my mobile phone DG scoping. Um, I took mostly the pictures of the uh, deep sky objects like M13. 
uh, M31 and uh, M11, M73 and such things. And uh, I will I will process the images, but uh, I mean process the image. I mean just <laughs> edit it in the mobile phone. Uh, nothing like a stack or anything. Like that. But uh, the preliminary result is is just uh, acceptable to me. I'm impressed by the results. And uh, yeah, why not digiscope? Just a digital camera over P10 Plus. And uh, if, if you use something like Huawei P30 or the latest one which comes in September P40 probably, you will get, uh, I'm sure, much better results. What I've noticed is that, uh, for example, M13, uh, we always read that the global clusters are very old stars. But you could see the red color of the M13 in the photograph. Uh, you will see my photographs, I will add it at the end of this video and you can see that. I'm really impressed by the quality of the images that I could obtain. <laughs> astronomy session, I will charge this just to make sure that I have always some power inside it. It will not take all of it but uh, when I'm using but it's good to be sure that you have enough and it also increases the life of the battery. So I'm going now to connect it. Everything is self-contained on the other side of it. Let's just bring the wire. Okay, now I've connected uh, to this to here. And now I am going to put it on the charge. That's it, this position, it shows charging and when it's fully charged, it goes green. They said don't trust this, but I trust this. I think somebody wants to sell me some other products there. So, this will be ready. We're going to open it tonight. And we have another session of astronomy. It will be not cloudy again. Okay, I have now finished my session of observation with the Mid LX90 Advanced Common Free Telescope. What I will do to cover it if I want to keep it on uh, setup. So, what I've done here, I've bought a plastic bag, bin bag, rubbish bag, and I've put it over it. And uh, there are specialized bags also, you can use them. And uh, they're costly, they cost anything from 100 pounds to something around that. A little bit more or some, sometimes less. And they say they're multi-layer and waterproof. This is waterproof, it's single layer. If I want, I can add another layer, or a even bigger one, I can add to this, as much as layers I have need. Of course, I don't recommend to keep it forever like this, just for one, several hours or one night, that's all right, if you have to go somewhere to observe. So that's a cheap solution for that. A pack of this, which is around, I think, 20, will cost you two pound, three pound, and saves you a lot, and the moment, they're not useful, you just throw them away. Okay, I'm, I'm now in Shropshire at the Welsh border in England. I have been to many places to look at the Milky Way and the solar eclipse and such things. I must say, Welsh border and Shropshire have the darkest skies I've ever seen. I never was able with any of my telescopes, you know, with naked eye, anywhere to see the scutum star cloud as clear as what I saw here. It's one of the prominent uh, star clouds in the Milky Way. And I saw it here in Shropshire. But naked eye. And uh, really impressive. Um, if people in the UK, I mean, I know that they are going to different places. Uh, Shropshire is a nice place if you go. If you can use a weather forecast at a good time, it's good to go to Shropshire or go to Welsh border. Uh, or Wales itself inside of Wales, one of the darkest sites probably in the whole Europe and as far as I can say probably in one of the darkest sites in Eurasia
Okay, uh, I had a visit to the mill which is there. It took around 20 minutes and now we are back. Most of the condensation has gone. So it worked. Beautiful telescope. I love it. That last night we had a lovely view of the sky. Everything I pointed I could see. And the Milky Way is amazing here. I think this is one of the darkest sights in the in the world probably. <laughs> because in in Wales and Welsh border there is not much people. And there is not lights, much light. So it's amazing. As you can see here. I'll leave it open for a while just to completely dry up. It is early morning, as you can see, the dew from last night uh, is yet there because I put the cap and then covered it with the plastic cover. But now I'm exposing it to the atmosphere and uh, the body of the telescope is already dried up. But uh, the lens will also dry because at the moment it is exposed to the atmosphere. Last night I covered it with a cap. So you can see it's starting to move from the, the evaporation of the dew, from where the secondary mirror is there. Probably next time I bring a little heater or so, I mean, hair dryer. But the best thing is to have a device, even I can build it myself, is a Constantin or Necrom wire with a little battery attached to it. So it just will heat it up. Even when you get a new telescope, sometimes you see that they have drilled holes there. This hole, actually, I know what is it for. It was for holding a, my a Los Manti bar with uh, uh, two rings and attaching to the ring was a um, 80 millimeter Orion refractor. Very good idea. But these holes, I wonder if I don't close them, the atmosphere will, uh, will cause the dampening of the inside of the mirror, inside the tube. The air will go inside it and gradually we will have buildup of the moisture and moisture leads to the mold. I wonder should I cover these holes? Hmm. I will wait until the hot day. And the hot day when the moisture, everything coming out, hopefully, I will cover them with something. Even a blue tack may, be, may do that temporary. But I can clearly see this hole. Behind it is a secondary mirror and collector, collector plate. Yeah, that's what you see, the secondary mirror conjunction with the corrector plate. It's amazing how much uh, deep laser you can see there. And they don't affect the viewing as much as you expect. I think the secret of my success with observation of many of the faint fuzzies, nebulas and deep sky objects, was that um, 
I put this uh, Celestron, or you can use meat. Meat one is a little bit, I noticed, is too more, shows the prim uh, secondary mirror too much. But this Celestron one is all right. And if you use Antares, that will be all, also all right. This focal reducer actually made the field of view wider. So um, um, when I'm looking at the faint fuzzies, which are, uh, you know, big, uh, I mean, it can be up to two, three degrees in the case of the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, if you look at with a narrow field of view, you will not see the contrast between the darkness of the sky and the f brightness of the faint fuzzies. So this actually increased the field of view and I could see, discern them against the background of the sky. And I think that was the secret for that. This was really good. Get a, a focal reducer to use with. Uh, of course, uh, you can remove this if you want to. For planetary viewing, it probably is better to remove it or use a Barlow or a low magnification lens just to uh, see the more details that is visible in the case of the planetary objects like Jupiter and Saturn, which are now in the sky. And uh, for other things, for, for very wide objects like the faint fuzzies, nebula clusters, and all the things. It's better to have the focal reducer, so if you have a, almost two degrees here. Yeah. This is a this is 10 millimeter. I had a 40 millimeter last night on this. 40 millimeter, and with this uh, focal reducer, the widest possible field of view was around two two degrees, which is really good for, for uh, uh, moon widths, you could see. And that's the secret, I think, to using this comfortably with a um, good amount of the visibility. This is the heaviest and largest telescope I've ever used on a window sill. This is the 8 inch mid ET, mid LX uh, and 90. Uh, ACF uh, advanced coma free uh, latest model and uh, I'm using it on the windowsill this part of it is around 20 kilos on its own so quite heavy but it's stable at the same time uh, I'm using it in ultimate mode because uh, the window that I have is not big enough for turning and positioning and letting it automatically go and find the north and level itself and everything based on the GPS that it has, because that way actually it will hit, the tube will hit the window. So I'm using it and uh, yeah, the result is nice, I really am pleased with this. Before that the biggest uh, telescope I was using in the year was a, a 6 inch uh, max set of Cas uh, Cassegrain Skywatcher Skymax 150P. And now I have an 8-inch telescope here. Okay, this is the moon. And this is the Mead LX90 telescope with 2-inch uh, eyepiece. This is a modular Hyperion eyepiece, 10 millimeter. This is a butter planetarium, of course, eyepiece. Uh, finding the low focal length uh, eyepieces is difficult for two inch because uh, two inch barrel sizes because uh, some say that these are equal to one and a half quarter one a, one and a quarter eyepieces so I don't believe in that the eye comfort of the two inch is much better than the one inch and uh, as you can see the setup really works nice I can show you if I can how the image looks like let's go and see My hand is shaky so I can really hold it. I have to use one of those uh, camera adapters but uh, it's too, too late for this.
I never had this experience before. So much detail I can see now on the Jupiter's disk with this. I wish I could show it uh, properly, but uh, my hand is very shaky. I cannot show it really as good as I wish. And uh, yeah, it looks like photographs that you see everywhere that they are produced with CCD images and other CCD imaging devices, but with more detail. You know, ah, it's amazing. Great razor spot is there. It's, it's beautiful. And that is the moon, that faint dot is the gray, um, Jupiter, and I can see the great retro spot and all the details, all the blue patches and everything, blue green patches, with this uh, other Hyperion uh, 10 in 10 millimeter, 2 inch modular uh, eyepiece. Everything here is bother except the telescope, which is the meat. And the attachment back focuser is also focal reducer is um, Celestron 6, uh, 0 0.6 to 63 uh, focal reducer. So I'm mean, just remove that and just see how it will be without that. Okay, this is the Mid LX90 uh, EMC. I bought it from the ENS Optical in Birmingham, a guy called Steve. And I really regret I paid £950 for this. And I got this one, is a LX90 uh, ACF Advanced Comma Free. I bought it from eBay, £520. And I'm looking at the Saturn at the moment, which is somewhere in that dark. And I was wondering why when I look at this, it's just so unclear, it's just fuzzy, it never comes to focus. I'm using the same, I uh, detached this back focus with the diagonal and the ortho eyepiece, and I use also this uh, targeting the fossil 40 millimeter astral revelation and I use the same on this in this one crystal clear amazing clear and in this one rubbish you cannot see anything you know just uh, through hazes if you're looking and I can show you nothing wrong with the front but when I was the stars look at the stars autofocus this doesn't show any uh, it shows that it's out of collimation. Even worse than that, I think that the mirror is damaged. It's deformed, kind of. It's, instead of being round, it's kind of um, hexagonal. And this one is perfect circular. 520, ENS optical, 950. Rubbish. The guy doesn't know, either doesn't know about anything about the telescopes, or he's just dodgy seller. Steve is probably a dodgy seller. I don't know this. It looks completely faulty it doesn't show you know, I was looking with both of these on the Jupiter just a few hours ago it was visible and uh, in this one I couldn't see more than a hint of the brightest of the I think South Equator belt with this one every detail was visible and I'm, I'm surprised and disappointed actually <sighs> In this optical, I don't think they're, they really know anything about the optics or they don't care about the customer or anything like that. I don't feel that they really care. They get anything that's from eBay, they buy it and they sell it as it is. They don't do anything. I saw that. I have a video, you can see that. 
I'll be the dirty crow if he was actually scratching this character plate in f as if cleaning it. But nothing more than vandalism. So, difference between an honest eBay seller, individual, home, home seller, as you can call it, and this is a ENS Optical, a company who buys everything. It's a shop practically. Buys everything from eBay and just sells it on the, again on the eBay. But in a very dodgy way, actually ask the people in the eBay to come to the website. Now I understand why they ask this. I think the reason they ask it is because they ask people to come to their website and buy it from there, have a 50 pound discount. When you go there, in my experience, that's what happened to me. They kept my money for one month. They didn't send a telescope. One month, my money was in their hand. And uh, you don't have that vulnerability when you, you shop from the eBay because practically uh, within the 28 days they have to send it. Otherwise, you can just go and uh, cancel it. And you can confirm it also if you are not happy. You just They have definitely have to give it back. When you go to the website, there is no such a guarantee. That's it. You are at the mercy of them. So that's the reason they encourage people. You look at the items they're selling in the eBay. They all the time saying that come to our website, you get fifty pound discount or something like that, depending on the item. And that's the reason they want to keep you away from the security and uh, you know the assurance that uh, eBay gives you through the PayPal and other things. Don't buy from the eBay uh, out of the eBay anything if you want from them even. Of course, you can buy the same item just if a few months earlier you could buy it from the eBay. They come again, just buy it from the normal people, not from the company. I'm very really disappointed. Such a big lemon they sold me. £950 I paid for this. It's rubbish. Optically rubbish. It's optically a lemon. Just nonsense. Bad optic. Don't know what they have done with it, but the way that I saw the handle, the corrector plate, it talks a lot. Don't buy from ENS Optical. By the way, I forgot this one that I bought from the ENS Optical. The hand control of it was faulty. Even when they were in the video I've made, you can see the hand control is not working. The guy says, oh, it's not working. Uh, maybe next time works, as if magic. He believes in magic. Anyway, I had to write. After three months, I think, communication, he finally sent me a replacement for that. For the faulty one, so practically. Yes, three months I paid, and uh, one month I didn't have the telescope. He was just using my money. Around £1,000, £950, with the petrol and everything I collected. Then, after that, uh, yeah, three months of waited just to actually be able to use it with the thing, uh, with the hand control. Not good experience. Um, I was thinking a long time why this ENS optical uh, guy was telling me that you are lying. When I actually I paid money and I just wanted to come and collect it, as he told me that you can do it. And I was thinking why he was worried, why he was selling such a thing. It's, it's just pointless. I didn't understand even what it means when he says... We have fraudulent people lying. My money was in his bank account. And one month passed. He was there every time saying, I'm in Spain, I'm, I'm away. And uh, now I realize that he may have some dealings with people. And he made a, a fraudulent treatment or something like that. Something went wrong and the customer service was so bad somebody complained to somewhere important. And he was aware of that, and he was worried that somebody may come after him. They want to see him in his place. That's the only reason I can think of. Otherwise, what's the point of it? I've paid the money, I just want my item. And my money was in his back, and directly, direct debit, it went to his account. And I was wondering why £950 went to his bank account, and yet he was moaning about these things which I couldn't understand, I couldn't figure out what he's talking about. The money is in his hand. He, he has to deliver the I think by then he was just trying to uh, because I saw a lot of things he may I have a suspicion he may put parts take one part from something put it on another one just makes them you know something like that that's what I'm thinking uh, this 
the box that was for mine went actually for somebody else. And the rubbish wrap, wrapped lead came for me again. None of this was mentioned when I was buying it from his uh, website. In a subject or so, it's just all dodgy. Look looked dodgy, not right to me. I wish I didn't buy it, but then my money was in his hands, so I couldn't read it. Uh, I was new also to eBay. I didn't know that you can buy it actually in eBay. You just have to wait for the right item to arrive. Anyway, it was a compulsive buy. And this one, Advanced Common Free GPS version, LX90, came with a audio star hand control. It talks, number one. <laughs> Much better deal than that. Look at it. <laughs> Come on. A rat. Look. <laughs> Look at it. Come on. And we want to go out of EU with this kind of businesses and trades and manufacturings. I don't know really. This is a customer service we get.